Now, Space Engine is truly a dream come true. Whether you're a fan of sci-fi or whether you just love staring up at the stars and wondering what's out there, there's something here for you and, well, there's truly a limitless things to explore. I've no idea where I am at the moment. I'm many uh, millions of light years away from Earth, certainly outside the Milky Way in another galaxy far away. And this is uh, some type of rocky world. If you look up in the uh, top left-hand corners there, the Space Engine is telling us this is a Torrid Airless Mini Terra, whatever that means, and we're orbiting a rather large star. And very large indeed, actually. Now, you may think we're quite close, but if we uh, use the mouse here and click on that star, we can see it's an orange supergiant, and that it's 10.59 astronomical units away from our current location. So that's roughly 10 times the distance between Earth and our own Sun. So, yep, yeah, this is a very, very large at Stan, we probably wouldn't be too healthy if we were standing here this close to something. That's likely got a tremendous energy output. Now, Space Engine lets you explore everything. You can land on every type of planet, whether they're airless or even if they're gas giants. Now, gas giants, at least at the moment, are not particularly brilliant. They do have some sort of atmospheric scattering, but once you get under the cloud layer, which is very thin, then there's nothing down there. So you're not going to go flying through thick volumetric clouds at the moment in Space Engine. But as for everything else, that is certainly here. And like I say, this is... Well, I can't remember if this is a moon or this is a planet. I believe this is a planet. But let's zoom out and we'll have a look to see what else we can see about it. And the details here are very nice. And yes, a little wind joke here. This is a beige weld. But there's enough details on here to keep it looking interesting. Some gorgeous craters there as well. So as we increase our velocity, we're now flying at 1,300 kilometers a second. And we can increase way past that. And there's no obvious that moon's right here. But instead, let's fly towards the local star. Now, I've got to actually fly out a little bit first because I do want to show you something about this. Now do keep in mind this isn't going to be a full tutorial or anything like that about how Space Engine works, but if you are interested then simply let me know in the comments section. I'm going to be doing more videos of this so more than open and more than willing to do tutorials. So here we are then orbiting the star, this beautiful orange supergiant and we can see some absolutely gorgeous and stunning effects coming out of the star here. These are solar flares and mass ejections and all the rest of the lovely stuff that comes out of at stars. And I'm just peering around the microphone there so I can look at the keyboard. And we're going to press L because S, L rather, increases the time scale. Now, increasing the time scale within a space engine is neat for a whole bunch of reasons. It allows us to see a sunrise and sunset. It allows us to see all the orbital mechanics of the engine. But in this particular case, it's going to allow us to see all these wonderful, gorgeous effects of the central star itself. But we do have to get up to a very high speed. And that's simply down to the vast scale and the vast sizes of everything that we're actually looking at here. And indeed, the scales are so vast that even at 10,000 times the speed, things still look relatively static. And it's not until 30,000 times the speed, things are start to very slowly move. And you can see some motion around the sun here. It's a nice, very, very nice, actually, effect. So let's just take that in for a few seconds. So that's enough for that. What we're going to do is slow back down to... Uh, well, that's the velocity. That's not what we want to slow down. I'll go over that in just a minute. But we're back down to regular speed. Our velocity dictates how fast we're actually traveling. So nearly five astronomical units a second. I actually want to get a little bit closer to this star because I want to show you what's in orbit around it. You may have noticed early on as we passed by it, you can see a number of uh, bodies around the star. And these are very, very close to the star indeed. Let's slow down a little bit. Now, in case you're wondering about how I'm getting all the smooth controls here, I know quite a few of you have used Space Engine in the past. So I'm not actually using mouse and keyboard here. I'm actually using my HOTAS. So I've set up all the uh, binds and inputs for that, the throttle and stick, and that does help massively. And this gives some very smooth uh, camera controls, which is pretty nice. A little bit jer jerky there, but nothing too bad. Now, most of these are rocky bodies. They're all basically asteroids. Some of them are very, very small. Others are pretty large. 
Moving on then, now let's take a look at the closest planet to the star. You can actually bring up a star chart of the all the bodies within the star system you're actually exploring by simply using the F2 T that there. Excuse me, by simply using the F2 key. Select the planet you want to go to and double tap on G and that will take you straight to the uh, planet. Now we're actually so close to the central star here that getting up close to this planet will cause some visual issues. Not technically in the graphical sense, but rather in the sense that everything is just too darn bright to see. It makes everything look stunning, makes everything look beautiful, but difficult to see. But there is an option to reduce down exposure, and there are a few other options to reduce down the brightness of stars. You can actually effectively even turn them right off if you wish. In fact, you can actually turn everything off. You can turn off moons, you can turn off planets, you can turn off galaxies or stars, anything you want. It's a full engine and you effectively have full control over it. So we've got a little moon here going around the planet. But this one is very, very small. Basically an asteroid looks a little bit like a peanut really. Now, one of the things that many people enjoy about Space Engine is the sheer variety of planets here. We're still in the same system here. This one is the fourth planet from the sun and it's got some very nice colors on it. Now, of course, wherever you travel within the game, you will find similar planets. There are other pink planets out there. There's other bluey purple planets, much like this out there. But there is so much variety that every time you do come across something, it feels like you're seeing it for the first time. So this is an atmospheric world, and we're just coming into the atmosphere through the cloud layer, which, again, not volumetric clouds, but nonetheless, very nice to see. They do add to the world and down to these mountains. So in some ways, the terrain in the uh, Space Engine can be fairly bland, it can be fairly simple, just look at all the flat surfaces there with relatively low detail, but on other occasions you find mountain ranges like these, and these are dotted all over the place, and the terrain looks absolutely phenomenal. And it's on occasions like this that I could spend an absolute age just flying over the surface of the planet, of course, you've got full control over the speed, so you can get up to many, many times the speed of sound, allowing you to cover vast distances very, very quickly. Equally, you can slow down quite a bit and just have a nice leisurely pace over the planetary surface. Now, it is worth bearing in mind that I'm in camera mode here. There is also a spaceship mode, but that's something I'll show in a future video. Now, sometimes when you're flying around, you'll see an object in the sky and you may wonder what it is. But you don't have to wonder for too long because you can actually go to anything you can see within the uh, sky. And let's go straight there. This one is an asteroid. And it's probably going to look quite small. So another one of those uh, potato worlds. As we could call them. But even still you can get in quite close. And they do have a remarkable level of detail. And we'll see that drawing as we get a little bit closer. The lighting in Space Engine is also something that's very, very nice. It has dual light sourcing, so you're not just limited to the light source that comes from the uh, main star here, but you're actually getting a load of refraction across other areas, so from the stars in the sky, as well as any nearby planets. And that does give you some very nice effects as well, and we're going to have a look at a little moon in a minute that gives a very good example of that. Onwards then to the third world within this star system. This one has a rather unusual coloration, and yes, it does also have an aurora on the top. Now every world that has an atmosphere within Space Engine would also feature auroras. And these look stunning in their own right, but when in conjunction with certain atmospheric effects, as well as certain lighting effects from the stars, then you can end, some, end up with some rather uh, beautiful combinations. And let's just take a moment to enjoy that. Up on the top left there, you could just be able to see a small moon. And this is one of the things I actually wanted to show you about the lighting. You can see the side facing us is facing away from that supergiant star. But apparently, for some reason, this moon still has a little bit of light on it. It's not pure black, as you'd perhaps expect it to be. And the reason for that is because we're getting some golden light cast on this from the nearby planet as we come around. You can see it's lit up from two sides. We've got the bright white light from the uh, orange star, and we've got some yellow light being refracted off the, or reflected off the planet here. So in case you're wondering if there'd ever be a game that has planets that look even remotely comparable to this, 
there are actually a couple of upcoming games that should have far superior planets to this. One of them is Battlescape. And I've done a video on that very uh, a long time ago when I had access to a demo version of it and it was actually stunning to fly around in. But it's something that should be out at some point this year and it's certainly a game I'm going to be covering on this channel. But let's get down here onto this desert world. So from here you can see various things. We've got some... It looks to be like a storm going on there with these swirls in the clouds. Unfortunately... Those aren't actually active storms. There's no wind effects and things like that. But you can also see the uh, mountains down here. From this distance, they don't look too interesting, really. But as you get up close, you'll see just how nice they actually do look. And what we're going to do as well is we'll come back out in just a moment and we'll speed up time to see what this swirl actually looks like when the time is accelerated. And I've never tried it, so I don't know actually what to expect from that. But as we get down to these mountains... You can see there's an immense amount of detail down there. And again, getting a few uh, frame rate issues, but I think that's not Space Engine. It's to do with my uh, capture setup. So it's something that I'm going to need to fix with future videos of this. Every so often then, when you're flying around, you'll come across some rather spectacular horizons. Sometimes this can be planned because you'll know exactly what you're looking for. Other times, on this occasion, it's incidental. You just come across it by complete accident. What we're going to do is speed up time again, I think, here. And um, I'm just wondering whether to go up or whether to stay here. I think we'll stay down on the planet. We'll speed up time and we'll see what happens with this uh, cloud here. Need to come to a full stop, though, in order to do that. And I don't really want to speed it up too fast. But you can see it does actually move. Now, it doesn't actually change shape, it doesn't actually have anything going on with the clouds itself, but nonetheless, it does make for some pretty interesting visuals, and in a minute we'll probably see sunset as well. You can see the backdrop, the sky is actually starting to get a little bit darker. Not sure where the sun is though, I think it's probably behind us. And some stunning colours there, just look at that. And if we wait around long enough, we're in for a very special treat here. Time accelerated to around 300 times what we'd expect. Just come up for a thousand, and I don't actually want to miss this here. There we go. We can see sunrise. And I think that's where we'll leave it. I'll leave you to enjoy those rather gorgeous colours there. Be making some more Space Engine videos over the coming weeks and months, so if there's anything you'd specifically like to see, then just let me know in the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.